that see now has lost uh, has yeah. lost a good hundred meter of, of so this one was taken. This was a warm, this was a, this was a second warm up right? for our walk actually. That was just a walk on the glacier there. Yeah, yeah. And you can see that what they have, I mean, um, they have to put those, those um, because it's really a moraine, it's a really a moraine rock, it's been completely uh, shaped by the glacier, and they put those layers, otherwise it's becoming can't just come go on the on the ice you know, for Chamonix and with, with tourism. So you've got those those letters every year or every three, four years they add three or four letters. So when I was a kid, that would probably the last letter I would have gone would be here. And then they better all those now. Um, the guards still we saw the guards, they still wrote their clowns on those on the letters. I like, really know because we are quite confident and that's actually I find mm -hmm. most bothering with the rope of the letters. And this there are quite a few routes as well. You can those um, if you like slab climbing, those are the uh, the best of slab climbing you can ever find. You know, some of those climbs would be uh, you know in, in, easily in the 20, 21, 22. Uh, like nothing, just walking, just just like this. It's magnificent. Probably from the the very athletic climb that you can find in uh, some of those places. As you can see, it's quite climb, but you can still be very steep. You know, very steep. We didn't do most of it. We went to do a bit of rock climbing, but not um, not good. Um, that's on the other side. You see very different rocks. You can see far more uh, metamorphic and far more um, sheared rocks. So a bit more maybe on the multi-brand type of rocks that the uh, other side of the valley, uh, which is very much more plutonic rock, very very thick crystal, in it, very solid rock. That's Chamonix Valley there. Um, yeah, that's the, that's when we went to the office. Someone went to the office. That was walking down from the glacier. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's walking down from the glacier. You guys took yeah, the glacier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and why you don't you walk over there? So that's Chamonix there, yeah. Um, so you see, you can see Chamonix now. It's quite almost a big city, really. It's, it's a bit like when Star was pretty green type of the uh, in motorway for the years. Unfortunately, lost a little bit of the charm, but the center of the, of the village is still quite, uh, quite well maintained and, and manicured and quite a bit of a cachet as well. Um, that's a book town, it's called an Alpine Airbag. So, you, those are big goats and they're really, they are wild, but they are so used to people. You, know, you can go reasonably close to them, they, they, they are such glamour, these guys. They've got a very soft hoof. Compared to the chamois, the, the chamois who's got a really hard roof, and so the, the chamois would be really good on the ice, with, except the, those guys don't like the snow on the ice. But on the rock, they've got absolutely fantastic. It's just absolutely amazing. They are amazing climbers. And this one was, uh, yeah, you can see one here as well. And on the background, you can see Mont Blanc there, Gris Gris, just behind, and that's the Gris, the Cham what we call the Gris de Chamonix. They all got a name, but um, I will explain you that. That's the Dome du Géant. And the Vallée Blanche is in the between here, and that's, that's the Italian border here. And for those who know a bit about the, uh, the mountains, that's the Dru. The Dru is one of the famous big, uh, big uh, towers of rock. Uh, quite a few, quite a few very famous routes there that goes like 800 meters of vertical solid granite climbing. Um, beautiful rock. It was about this time of the trip that we had our first little drama. So when we came off Mont Blanc du Tapo, we were very, we were thirsty. I mean, we we're always thirsty. You know. Any excuse to go and get a beer. We got down there, covered in sweat, you know, and we said, let's go and have a, let's go to the pub. Yep. Marty decided, being an Aucklander, that he wasn't suitably attired to go to the pub. So he said, I want to go to a shop and get fresh change of clothes, and I'll join you. Oh, come on, Marty. No, no, I insist. So Geoffroy, he took, he went off, with, he dropped us off at this nice little bar, and those guys went off to find Marty a suitably smart set of clothes. 
Check it out because that's where we wanted to start Mont Blanc from, and so we went through the Mont Blanc tunnel. Yeah, uh, more dramas. We found that one of the team, his part, he didn't have his passport, so his passport was in somewhere else. Where was that? His girlfriend. His girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. So we had to work through that as well. Uh, but we got, we got there, we went through the tunnel, which was a really interesting experience. It was the tunnel where the big fire was 15 years ago, something like that. And um, they completely rebuilt the tunnel, redesigned it, and all these really interesting sort of safety measures to, to try and stop something like that happening again. And you come out at the top of this beautiful valley in Italy, Above this little old historic town, Kumaya, um, with mountains all around you again. But different scenery. It was different. The Italian side was different from the French side. Um, but one thing that wasn't different, cable car. <laughs> that hadn't changed. So we thought, well, the only way of getting acclimatised is get up high, and the best way of getting up high over there is catch a cable car. So that's what we did. Well, that's the El Bremer cable. So this one connects to the Gudimili, so you take this one, you take Gondola across the Valley Blanc, and you go back to Chalons. So if you, you don't even touch the star, I've never done the, the full range, but I'm not interested, but that's what lots of people do. So that's in the cable, in the gondola, it's going up. You see, there are quite wide gondolas, and you can see here, the Greek blanc de Petre, so white, white uh, Petre being one of the hardest, and that's a black of Petre, black being one of the hardest climb in the entire Alps, which I can safely say I never do. And that's a refuge to and that's where Paul, Paul absolutely was, absolutely incredibly. You arrive at the top of the telephery, you walk in this tunnel, and then there's a lift. You take the lift. I didn't even know that, I just take a lift. You walk through this tunnel and then you arrive here. I mean, this is ridiculous. But I mean, it's just, it is unbelievable. But then once you're there, it's a real refuge. Oh, absolutely. It's an Italian Alpine Club, and uh, 
you know, they, they, you are in dormitories and they call you at 6.30 for dinner and you're sitting here and you eat like everyone, you've got a polenta, in Italy you've got a polenta, and you know, so the sauce, meaty sauce on it, and then one uh, glass of wine, you know, so it's really hot life, but arriving there is pretty, pretty so that's such a meal there, and you've got behind the Italian Alps, that's the noir de Pepe, the black of Pepe. And then that Grand Paradiso, for those of you, Grand Paradiso will be one of them here. Uh, and you can see the cables of the, of the gondola, they're really interesting. So this is um, a shokar, a yellow big shokar, which is in the famous corvi uh, uh, bird in the, in the Alps everywhere. It's, very, uh, it's a bit like the Kia, although I don't think it's endangered, but uh, it's very, very inquisitive. It's sort of up there. It goes right up to the summit of Mont Blanc, and we'll we come up to you and look after some, some crumbs of sauce. So the following morning we got up not too, it was okay, we got up about 4.30, I think, or 5, or I think that was reasonably uh, decent. And then you walked immediately on the glacier, so that this time is a bit more traditional Kiwi style uh, walking, glacier walking, because that's where on the, on the, you can see we're on crevasse terrain. So that's the Mont Blanc du Tapu where we were a few days before, Seine Valley, and that's the humidity here. So it's all, it's reasonably cool. And so the, the walk goes around here and then comes up on the other side of the valley. Other mountains. This is what you're in winter when you what you would have done, you get out here and you ski mm. all here and then down to some yeah. It's a magnificent ski. So it does look very tame because we all talk about you know we all know about this cable car and dropping, you know, being by four at two thirty. But but those clubs, some of those clubs here with the grand capucin here. Capucin, Javas du Tipila, the Guilly Boot at Mont Blanc du Tapu, those are very safe to climb. Very safe to climb. Looks like down on the west coast, you know, around the Piney Alps. Yeah, it's it's got, it's just so I felt more like, it did actually feel more like New Zealand, yeah, the Italian side. And so that's uh, La Tour Ronde. Yeah, it's quite snow, the Italian side, or is that a. No. no. Sorry, not, that was, that's the photo taken in winter. And that's the north face of Toronto. That's a nice climb. That was probably a little hard from our boat. I would have taken Paul and Mali there. And that's, that's 45, maybe a little bit at 55 degrees here. But it's a nice little climb. But we went around here and we did the uh, Gervasity uh, crew out there. Um, it's, it's been nice. It's a real summit. You've got a real feeling of being at a summit. It's for big, for, well, they're not beginners, but for, for warm up or for our taken a lot of beginners that was too long because really have the sense of having the true summit and a sense of achievement that's really good for people who can very little mountain way. And that's the, uh, that's in the corridor, so it's pretty short, it would have been what, 20, 50 meters at the most? Yeah. 50 meters, and it was probably 45, there may have been a little bit of 50 degree. Um, the snow was really be soft, so it was, it was quite, quite nice. We, we walked together, we didn't pitch, but we kept our boys, we kept my boys on rope because they had never done that before, so that was quite, that was quite nice. But really nice, really nice little climb. A three weeks later, it was just dry. So it was probably the, from the, la the last time. Um, yeah. So that's just, yeah, it, it, it's, yeah, it's probably three, four hundred meters up the whole Kuwa. The bottom, as you said, the bottom piece was the steepest. It was quite steep. The one, it was just a section was quite steep. Joffre had a little experience. He he was trying to he was up front for a while, trying to work out how to get through the shrub because it looked as though the whole the bottom of Kuwa was cut off. It was cut off, and I, I was further back with with my with my boys who I was in charge of, because we each, we each sort of split up. So Joffre would take one of the boys, um, usually Remy, and I would take Felix, and Marty and I would take Felix, who's just a little bit more sort of, I don't know, maybe sure on his feet. Anyway, Joffre was going up, all of a sudden he started yelling and carrying on, go back, go back, and he had gone through the 
through the shrines, you know, his feet was waving in the air. Now, I must admit, I did actually enjoy just a few minutes just watching <laughs> Tofua, just, you know, yelling and counting on before we, we pulled him, pulled him out and he went round and we carried on up. But the Kuwa was great. It was our first, it was the boys' first taste of sort of exposed, steeper, up to sort of 50, steeper climb and front point at, um, and we, as we said, we just moved together. Uh, we didn't pitch up. We, we were happy enough to do that. And you, you come out onto this beautiful summit that, in the sun, because the cool I was in the shade, um, with Mont Blanc behind, right behind. So there's a happy group sitting there. Um, now every summit in Virtually every summit in the European Alps will have a will have a religious um, sort of rocky summit. yeah rocky summit will have a, a sort of a, a religious icon or a, uh, something on the top. And on this particular one, it was a beautiful bronze Madonna on a nice stand, um, and it was it was it was a lovely touch. I thought it was really nice. Um, they must attract lightning. Sure, I was joking that they are uh, like that, which in some ways can be good when if you get caught within the sort of a short distance, they will take the lightning before you. Yeah, that's right. That's I don't right. think they will. No, they will. They've been known to. Uh, and of course, you know, the the man of like all glory and so people like it. Mm -hmm. There's also There's a couple of very well known French novels about the man of taking the lightning and sending it out. There's one at the top of Les Drues, which is very well known as well. There's one at the top of Grand Charmeau. There's one at the top of Tourmont, I know of. So that was lovely. I mean, that was sort of, it was, it was a short climb, but it was more interesting. It just, we didn't tell you what it we, didn't, we had the mountain more or less to ourselves. Yeah. We went down uh, the, the, the standard route, which was a rocky, nice sort of granite, blocky uh, route. Um, it was more of a New Zealand experience. I must, I must admit, I, by that stage, I was starting, I was starting to become sort of a little bit fed up with, with going to lose and just hordes of people. And stuff like that. Um, the weather, as you can see, the weather had settled. We were just, we were in a very settled period of weather. Obviously, high pressure. Um, thunderstorms had pretty much disappeared. It was just. It was just the heat, just the heat to continue. So after you know a week or a week and a bit of acclimatising, having done a couple of peaks, as your price said, there were other peaks we were looking at doing, but we we went for two or one because it was more of a rock peak and it had a shaded face we could climb. Uh, some of the other peaks there was issues with just the snow just turning to mush and just long grinds. I mean, we wanted to acclimatise, get the boys into, into shape. We didn't want to wear ourselves out by just sort of you know, overdoing. So, now to the main event. Uh, we felt we were, we were acclimatised, we were fit, we were ready to go. So, as Joffre said, we wanted to, we didn't want to just go up and down the standard route of Mont Blanc. It's just, it just didn't seem attractive. And the other thing we wanted to do, because four of us, Joffre was the only one of us who had climbed it, so we wanted to climb it from the valley floor, both sides, road end to road end, so to speak, a la New Zealand style. We were really keen on doing that. So here is two photos taken from each side, which show the route. Um, it's on or off the internet. Shows the routes up, um, and safe to say, it's not. They don't. They're not as steep as it looks there, or at least they don't. They don't feel steep. There is nothing there that's. I would say is, we found it was difficult. Certainly, you know, it was reasonably straightforward, but it was long. So on the Italian side, you go up a, a, gla up, up a glacier, um, most of it is moraine covered, 
um, you get onto the white ice briefly, then you up off the side of it, uh, and you climb 600 metres up through bluffs and, and ledges, pretty straightforward with a pack, but again, not similar to New Zealand, uh, and to a refuge there, um, lovely, smaller one, um, you still get served your meals, but um, it feels a little bit more, feels just a little bit more isolated. Yeah. Um, you have to book all this in. Yeah, so you have to book yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, there's not so many people do the Italian side. So, well, it's quite oh. a grown chap, so it's way. I mean, we're still a lot of people, but yeah. it would be like, well, maybe we're 50. From 20? 30? Well, I mean, yeah, I'll put between 20 and 30, maybe. Yeah. yeah. The hat. On the other side, you will have had 120. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a lot of people. So, first day, glacier, upside. To, to Ganawa, and then second day over the top. So you, you go back onto the glacier, you walk glacier on the glacier, um, no seracs, but plenty of crevasses. Um, you need to be need to be aware of you need to be aware of where, of where you are, what you're doing. Then you exit the glacier, climb up onto a ridge, um, and you. A little bit of rock there, and then along quite a sh reasonably sharp erect, fantastic aspect to Dom de Gutier, which is uh, it's a it's a snow dome, four or five hundred vertical below Mont Blanc. Uh, there is a little shelter up there, and then summit ridge to the to the top. Um, all in the day from, from the refuge. Yeah, yeah, from the then down the other side. If the refuge, what would that be? What height would that be? Uh, uh, well, just the same as Mutay was about 3.7, I think. 3.7, yeah. yeah. I think it was about 11 and a minute. My memory is about 11 and a minute, 1200 meter vertical height, so 3.6. Yeah. So, you know, 1200 meters at, you know, sort of 4,000 meters. So it's, and you're in an altitude. So it's a, it's a, it's a reasonably long, you know, long morning anyway. Get to the summit, over the top, and then you come down. Um, you come down the other side, down the glacier. Um, you stay at Gutier, a, a brand new sort of spaceship hut there, which you get sort of mid afternoon, and then and then you another day to get down to the back of the door. To the chalet. Yeah. So you did the journey pitching? Just no pitching. Yes. No, there's no pitching. It's, uh, I mean, you still need the rope when you uh, for for um you need the rope for the for the crevasse, and you need the rope if you are with people less um less acclimatized to bridge walking. You get the foot on the on the array. So that's where we parked the car, that's our car we parked there, and um, we just start that. But that was about 1400 meters uh, above sea level, so go up the Biage Valley. Um, there's a famous, there's a famous uh, great walk, because the Grand Randonnée that goes around the Mont Blanc Massif, it's called the Tour du Mont Blanc. It goes, goes here and goes right here. If you, if you are into a great walk, that's, that's really highly recommended. So first, first day was really walking to Glenella. Glenella Hill is about here, uh, about there. So a long walk on the moraine. We're actually low looking at the roof down there. It was a young, young, very young boy uh, looking at it. Martin uh, looking at it. I don't know what he said. That's a bonus for you. Uh, very dry, as you can see, very dry. Even for you know that we are. Uh, it was a. That was the 30th of June because we climbed on the 1st of July. And it was actually interestingly quite good because they closed Mont Blanc for parapunting on the 1st of July. Because people start from, they start from 150 meters above Chamonix. They, they blow their, um, their sail. And the, the, the air is so hot that they go up and go up and within an hour and a half they have the cement of Mont Blanc. 
And the day before, there was 150 power plants at the top of Mumbai. And I tell you what, when you learn that, when you walk there after six and seven hours walk, carrying, or the, you know, and you've got those people who just said it's really frustrating. So I was a little bit bit to go there and die. Um, so that's, that was fast. And then we, that's Godella, and that's a road. That, so that's where we go. Um, the, the track was there. You can, you can, see, you can see someone here. You can track there and go to Godella. The following day, we go down a little bit to go to Glacier. Sometime when the glacier, some summer when the glacier is really too open, there's a road that goes that way, but much longer, of course. And then it goes here on the flat, come back here, on the bike behind, and then on the river, right? Um, is that one of your pictures? Is that the position to run? This, is that near your picture? Yeah. That, was, that, was that was very, very close. Is that the picture? Yeah, yeah that's our picture. I would have said it was very close to the condition. Quite dry, few nevés. As soon as you can, you put food on the nevés, much faster to walk. Yeah. Very, very, very hot, obviously, but do you, do you get to live your days after your days later on? So, your days later on? Um, no, the day after, the, you mean in terms of weather? Yeah. The day after, the, we started in the rain, it was drizzling when we started in the morning, then it cleared up. We had not from the fog until here, and then suddenly cleared up. The following day was really, there was a big, much back on the summit, I don't think they would have done it the following day, well, well, day so we were very lucky. We're, with the power pump, and the bad weather was just there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do when it was local. You know, the trips, especially when they haven't been there for 35 years. And that's inside the hut in Galena, which is reasonably modern hut. It's uh, all, all that furniture, the trash, and there's a couple of mats. So, um, wedding here, having our beers, and wedding to be. Um, there was a huge thunderstorm. And there was, yeah, that's why right. we had a massive storm. Massive thunderstorm. And those thunderstorms are magnificent. They, they take all through our time of that area. I absolutely love that. Um, what's this? Oh, sorry. Okay, that's a... Is that all right? Yeah, that's a summit ridge. So there's quite a bit in between, but it was dark, of course, because it's just sunset here. Uh, that would be that would be like the, um, the Vice Horn, a pretty short sure Vice Horn, and Cer Materon, the Cervin, is would be just here. So that's Switzerland here, obviously. So we left it. And that's the summit ridge. Yeah. We got up. The night? We night. We left at one, and there was about 30 people in the hut. And, and again, a big cross section of people, you know. There were some Russians, were there? Russians or what? Yeah. East, East yes. block yes. climbers. There were some guides. Um, and obviously some. You know, some very competent ones. They got away very quick, moved very fast. That they they took off pretty quick. Uh, we sort of started off towards the end. Uh, you know, we were being five of us. You know, we, it took us a little while to do all this stuff. But as we moved up through the route, um, we found that the climbing was pretty much like New Zealand. Like we were cl rock climbing in crampons for one. 